Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and the iPhone 15 Pro Max has been my main phone over the past month or so and I wanted to share the overall experience, durability, what it's like as far as battery and much more. Now the overall design is something I've begun to really appreciate. Instead of having the really square off edges, we have this nice curve over to the edges, so we still have some grip, but we also have a little bit more comfortable feeling when you're holding on to it. It's definitely noticeable and I appreciate it more day to day. With the iPhone 14 models all the way back to the iPhone 12, this squared off edge is really nice and very grippy, but it's just not as comfortable to hold. And every time I pick up the new phone, it definitely feels different, despite it really looking similar when you're on camera or maybe in a photo. But once you pick it up, you notice it immediately. That nice radius over to the screen and then back over to the back is just very comfortable to hold altogether. As far as its overall durability, that's been a major concern for a lot of people since we have titanium now, and I've noticed some different chips and things off of mine, and I've mentioned before where I dropped it on a tile floor. So I don't typically drop my phones almost ever going back to the first iPhone, but you'll see we have a little bit of a scuff there, and at the bottom it actually chipped. So on the bottom here, it chipped and took off some of the finish. So that's going to be a concern for some people. If you tend to drop your phone a lot, I would definitely put a case on it. However, I didn't have any issues with the glass actually breaking or anything like that. It just fell about pocket height or so down to a tile floor and then it actually just chipped it. Thankfully, nothing broke or anything like that. But in general, I have noticed that the glass itself seems to scratch a little bit more than previous generations. Now, I know some people have tested this and show more scratch resistance, but in my case, you'll see here, I have quite a few scratches on it. In fact, I see more and more each day. And of course you could just put a screen protector on it. And I've done that with my 15 pro that I have where I tested that and other phones I have just to keep them protected as this seems to be a little bit easier to scratch than before. I like to actually try these out, durability test them, not just for videos, but I like the feel of it without a screen protector, but I definitely notice, especially in sunlight, more and more scratches that weren't typically there before. It again reminds me of the iPhone 11 series as opposed to last year's where I didn't really have many scratches on it all year round. So no issues before, but now I'm seeing more and more scratches. And I've seen that on other phones I have, just taking them out of the box, they seem to have a few scratches on them. Now, as far as the overall reception, because this is a new design with new chipsets and a new modem inside, the overall connectivity seems to be nice and fast, not just to Wi-Fi, but cellular as well. I know some people have had issues with Wi-Fi. I personally really haven't had any at all. I have had some issues with 5G though, but that could be spotty in the area I'm in. And I do test a lot of betas, so that seems to affect that. But in general, I have decent connectivity, but occasionally I'll have issues where it just won't load, whether that's on iOS 17.1, 17.2 betas, or whatever version by the time you're watching this. So sometimes I'll just be playing a song, it will stop loading, or I'll go into Safari and it just stops loading. So there's some odd issues here and there that hopefully can be remedied with software, but in general, the overall speed when you're on and either cellular, Wi-Fi, or anything else seems to be nice and fast. You'll see I have one bar of 5G, typically 5G UC. Sometimes it's about two bars where I live, but it just varies depending on the day. And usually it's pretty fast. So with one bar, you'll see it bumped up to 5G UC. We'll give it a second to connect here and let's see what the speed is. But typically I find I have better speeds with this phone than I did with the previous one. So even with just one bar of connectivity, we have well over 60 megabits per second download. Usually we only get about five up with just one bar, but we'll give it a second to test. And you'll see there we have, well, we're doing a little bit better at around eight megabits per second upload speed. So just given that we have one bar of signal, it actually does pretty well compared to what I've seen in the past. Once I'm outside, it improves greatly. And I've seen huge download speeds on this as well. Of course, if you're utilizing millimeter wave with the millimeter wave antenna, you're going to see even faster speeds if you have that. As far as making phone calls and things, it's actually crystal clear. I've had no issues with it whatsoever. Using FaceTime is what I typically do, but generally I have good connections. I don't really have issues and it just switched over to a different focus mode. And in general, it sounds pretty good. I really haven't had any dropped calls or anything like that. And if you're on a phone calls all day in a call center or somewhere else, and you work on phone calls and meetings, today's video sponsor, Polly, has you covered with the Voyager 60 Plus UC. These are actually certified for Zoom and Microsoft Teams. The Voyager Free 60 Plus UC are designed to be worn all day with comfortable ear tips in a size to fit any ear, and the case actually has a touchscreen on it. 
The touchscreen allows you to connect to different things, whether that's your iPhone or control music as well. It also lets you see your battery status or connect instantly with your team, playlist, podcast, and even in-flight entertainment with a 3.5 millimeter to USB-C headphone jack. Then you can listen to them wirelessly on an in-flight entertainment, music, watch movies, and more. You can connect to two different sources at once and switch between them with a memory of up to eight devices, and they feature a three mic array with active noise cancellation. They also have wind smart technology, so you sound clear even in a windy environment. They also have adaptive and transparency modes to make sure you can hear your calls and your caller can hear you. Voyager Free 60 Plus UC also delivers hi-fi sound with their 10 millimeter speaker drivers so you can listen distraction free to your music, shows, podcasts, and games when you need a break. The battery gives you up to 5.5 hours of use with an additional 10 hours using the charging case and also the case offers two ways to charge via USB-C or wirelessly with Qi charging. You can also customize the experience and sound using the Poly Lens app for desktop or your phone. You can even locate it using the app itself with Find My Device and also go into the settings and adjust the sound quality, ringtones and volume. To check out Poly Voyager Free 60 Plus UC for yourself, be sure to check out the link in the description below. Now the overall weight is something you actually notice right away. If you've been using a 14 Pro Max, once you pick it up, not only will you recognize the rounded curves, but you'll also recognize the difference in weight. It definitely feels a little bit lighter, and especially if you're coming from a 14 Pro Max or 13 Pro Max. So there's, that's a little bit of a nice change that we haven't had in a while. As far as the battery life, well, I am getting through the whole day typically using this, but I have had some issues with it that may be because I run betas and different software, but I did try fully resetting it. So currently, if we go back to battery health and charging, I'm at 100% capacity and I have over 20 charge cycles at this point, as you can see here with coconut battery that shows the battery capacities and more. If we go into the last 10 days, these do not seem to be accurate, and that's one of my issues with this. I would say I'm getting about five to six hours of screen on time, which is less than I would expect. This is saying nine hours and six minutes, but I definitely did not use this for nine hours and six minutes. The next day it says 12 hours and 24 minutes. Now, typically I'll get to bed by about 30% left on my phone. So before this with the 14 Pro Max, when it came out, I'd have 50 to 60% left. Now I have about 30% left. If it's a day of heavy use of the phone, I'll have to charge it usually late at night around 8 p.m. or so. So I'm not really experiencing great battery life with it yet, but that could be due to software and hopefully will be fixed soon. Charging speeds are basically the same as before, so no real difference is there. I wirelessly charge it, and when it comes to the display, I really appreciate this display, but it's not really any different than what we had before. I think the one thing that I do like about it more is the new standby modes that we have, where now with iOS 17.1, we can keep the display on all night if you wanna use it on a bedside stand. So if I bring in a charger here, and we just place it on this, wirelessly turn it to the landscape mode here, and if we lock it here, give it a second, it switches over to standby, and then I can see this all night if I have that option set that way. So that's something I really appreciate. Not everyone will, but unfortunately it's only limited to always on display iPhones, but at least it's on the new ones and the 14 Pro and Pro Max with always on displays as well. But it will stay on all the time and it's great to have that at night and just glance at it if you need to, and it turns to a red when it's dark out as well. But the overall display experience itself is basically the same we had with the 14 Pro Max. PW is basically the same. It doesn't bother me. It's about 480 or 460 hertz above 29% brightness. So that's the display flickering where you actually can't see this with your eyes, but at 240 frames per second, if it flickers a lot, it can really bother your eyes, cause eye strain. Some people actually feel nauseous from it and it can cause a lot of issues that way. I thankfully haven't had that at all with the 15 Pro Max. So I'm not sensitive to this phone at all. Some others I am. Now, one of the big upgrades this year were the rear cameras with ProRes with log footage as well. And I do really think that they've improved these cameras quite a bit. We do have a new sensor and the sensor seems to take really nice photos. I like what the processor is doing, making sure everything looks like it should in the photos that you see here. And everything just looks nice and clear from video to photos and more. And using this as your main camera is something you could definitely do on YouTube. In fact, I actually did that with video with ProRes 
I made a little camera rig I'll show in a different video, but with ProRes with an external recorder, it's super fast to get the footage off, plug it into USB-C. And that's something I really appreciate on this phone. That's one of the major upgrades with that USB-C port, getting footage off the phone. If you're recording in ProRes or ProRes log makes it super fast and it just looks great overall. The footage to many people is indistinguishable from a cinema camera on YouTube. So you've seen probably many tests at this point, but in general, I'm very happy with the camera overall. Now, as far as new features, well, we do have the action button and honestly, I set it my phone to silent and then I set the action button to the flashlight and other than testing out some of the new features, I put it back to flashlight and I haven't touched it since. I think it's in a little awkward position here high up on the phone, but it's not much of an issue. And I do find that I use it here instead of maybe going to the lock screen and pressing it here where I did before but I am used to doing this. So maybe I'll set it to a shortcut and have it do more functions, but Apple recently updated it to have the translate feature as well, which is really nice. So that's in iOS 17.2. So depending on when you're watching this video, it's either in beta or out to the public, but with translate, we can just translate using this. We've got a really nice animation there and it works well if you want to use it for translate. So they're adding more functionality to it. And I really like this new user interface. With daily use, if they really update this interface over time, this makes me think they're working on something maybe with iOS 18 that brings different changes. We've seen some new waveforms here with live activities. We're seeing changes with that standby mode. Hopefully we get some sort of update in the future updates. The speakers sound really good. In fact, compared to the 14 pro max, I'd say they're better and more clear. So they're just as loud about equally as loud, but they sound clearer to me and cleaner sounding. So just using those in general, I've been pretty happy with them. As far as the overall speed and performance, well, it feels pretty much like I'm using a 14 pro max. I don't really do things that are super intensive. Typically I'm listening to music. I'm using YouTube. I'm using maybe Safari or going into YouTube studio, using it for email, the camera and more. I don't play games on the phone, but once those new games come out that can utilize the processor, I'll probably try those out just to see what they're like on here. You can easily plug this into USB-C, plug it into a monitor or TV via HDMI and actually play this with a controller remotely and use this on your display. So you could play call of duty mobile or something else, which is something that's great. You could charge at the same time and more. So I definitely will be trying that out a little bit more as the year goes on and those games are released with the launch of the iPhone 15 models. Many people experience the phones getting overly hot to the point where you could barely pick them up or touch touch them because the back was so warm. Apple patched this with iOS 17.0.3 and fixed that issue in general. Now it will warm up a little bit if you're doing intensive processes, charging, things like that. That's completely normal, but it should never be so hot that you can't touch it or give you the actual overheat message on the display. Thankfully, I've never run into that, but one area I have noticed it gets overly hot is when I'm wirelessly charging in my Audi. If you have a German car, it seems Audi or specifically BMW where Apple actually acknowledged this it gets so hot that in some cases in BMWs, it ruins the NFC chip. So you can no longer use your phone as the key. Apple's acknowledged this and hopefully fixes this in the future. But for some reason, it just gets incredibly hot. If I use an Android phone in the same wireless charger, I don't experience that issue. So it's something they probably could fix with software where it recognizes the situation and just limits the power overall. But there's definitely something odd there. But in general use, I haven't noticed it warm up too much. I haven't had any issues. In fact, most of the time, Time when I pick it up, it's just nice and cool to the touch. So it seems Apple's fixed that issue with the exception of wireless charging in certain cars. If you're wondering if you should wait for iPhone 16 next year, that really depends on what you have now. If you don't think the 15 pro max is a big enough upgrade for you with the cameras and more, keep your 14 pro max. I've done comparisons and more. I still think it's a great phone and both will be supported for many years eight years at this point with the latest updates on some phones, such as the iPhone 6s and 6s plus. So if you want to wait next year, we're expecting some even bigger changes and maybe then we'll get a full redesign or maybe something that makes it look a little bit different with the camera bump and more. So I don't think there's any reason to rush out and get one of these unless maybe you've got a couple year old phone or maybe you just upgrade every year. At that point, you've probably already done that though. Now, if there's anything more you'd like to know about the iPhone 15 pro max 15 pro or anything else, let me know in the comments below, and maybe I'll do that in a follow-up video in a few months. And we'll talk about that later. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description. Like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.